Have you ever felt? Are you listening? Damn. Hi guys, welcome back to Coffee with Cat. I'm going to be answering a few questions and I will also be sharing a workout video today because I feel like I have been totally slacking on these videos between the holidays and getting sick. I have been kind of laid out um, and so it's kind of perfect because some of the questions that I'm going to answer are related to that. Um, the first question that I am going to be answering is what is your rule of thumb of working while you're work uh, working out while you are sick? What's your rule of thumb for working out while you are sick? My rule of thumb is that if you have like a fever or um, any kind of like stomach issues going on, you know, diarrhea, vomiting, you know, body aches, anything like that below the neck, don't work out, take the time to rest, focus on getting fluids. Um, if you have just like a light head cold going on, but you like feel overall okay or a little bit stuffy, then maybe do like a light yoga flow or some um, light weight lifting. Uh, don't try to overdo it, definitely listen to your body and see how you feel. And if you're definitely leaning towards wanting to rest, Take it as a rest day. There's no harm in resting and your body will thank you for it later. It'll keep you from prolonging sickness. So um, another question that I was asked is what is the difference between bilateral and unilateral movements? I love when I get these types of technical questions. So the difference between bilateral and uni unilateral workouts is the um, joints that you're using. So say if you're doing like a barbell row. Uh, opposed to bicep curls with a dumbbell, you would be using one joint opposed to using two. Um, another difference would be a unilateral workout would be like a squat or a deadlift, but a bilateral would be like a step up or a lunge because you would be using multiple joints to perform that movement. Um, so next question moving on, is it possible is it possible to reach your goals without tracking macros or calories? And I definitely do think that tracking can be extremely helpful at first. Um, so say if you have a long-term goal of say gaining muscle mass or losing fat, it can be helpful at first to kind of track and maybe enter your food or your meals into a calorie counting app like maybe my fitness pal or there's different macro tracking apps um, and then you can kind of see how your day breaks down and see okay i'm going way over on fat on this day or i'm going under on protein or whatever it may be and you can kind of make those adjustments um, it can be kind of hard to know unless you actually do track at some point um, so i think that it can be helpful to maybe do a period of tracking then you can get the swing of what the day looks looks like um, and then you can just kind of like prep and plan your meals according to that and I definitely don't track every day I haven't used my fitness pal regularly in a really really long time but I did it so much at first that now I know how many eggs in the morning how many carbs I should have and I just try to balance out my day and I'm also all about like just living life and trying to find a happy balance I feel like if you're always avoiding certain things to weigh five percent less it's like such a waste of your life like if there's something that you really really want then you know if you know that you are gonna be going out for tacos and margaritas with your girlfriends and you are looking forward to it skip the you know stale donuts at the office focus on the healthy meals that you prep so then you can have that treat without it being like an overly indulgent day um, and kind of segueing I don't think that you should have whole cheat days I think that treat meals are a lot better way to stay on track I think that if you do a whole cheat day it kind of can turn into a cheat weekend and then things kind of like spiral out of control and you end up doing too many days of cheat cheats or treats in a row but if you plan out ahead of time and you have that thing in mind then you can kind of manipulate your schedule around that treat so then you can not overdo it all in one day another thing you can do is coincide your treat meal day on your heaviest lifting day so if you're going to be you know going out for like a really carby like you know you're gonna get donuts with your family your favorite donut place do your heavy leg lifting day that day and use your donut as your refeed meal. Okay, I'm back with an outfit change because my camera died, so I decided to go film the workout portion and come back and finish the questions. So I'm a little winded in different pants, but moving on. The next question I received is how long you should rest between weight sets. So this kind of depends on the weight that you're doing. I would say if you're doing like a heavy lift, like say you're doing squats and you're using, you know, the heaviest weight that you know, you can use for, you know, let's say moderate weight, not your PR weight, but you're doing a heavy weight. I would say rest a minimum of 45 seconds to a minute. You can even wait up to two to three minutes between those lifts to get 
to really regain your strength and really get like the most out of that next lift. But say if you're doing like a high intensity like interval training type thing and you're using a lighter weight, I would say just move right on to your next set with like a 10 to 15 second rest period. Um, another question I received is what is better for weight loss? Um, lots of reps, lightweight or uh, heavy weight, less reps. So again, this is kind of depending on your goal. Um, for me, I try to like avoid over um, bulking in my upper body. So I stick to lighter weight, weight lighter weight, higher rep for my upper body, but say lower body where I'm okay with building a little bit more mass, I will use a lower rep and a higher weight. So. Let's get started by warming up your shoulders. So grab your resistance band. You want to hold this about a foot apart and you're going to pull these for 30 pulses for three sets. Next, grab a lighter set of dumbbells and we're going to do a complex. So this is a forward raise to fly. So you're gonna do your arms forward and then straight out to the side. So this full motion, the forward raise to fly is one rep and you're going to be repeating this for three sets of 30. So you're gonna get a nice shoulder burn. This is why you're using a lighter weight. Push through the pain on this and really focus on trying to finish all the reps. Next up is going to be push-ups with an alternating leg raise. So if this moves a bit too advanced, you could do just a plank with alternating raises here. You're going to be doing three sets of 10 of this. Next is going to be renegade rows. So for this, you're going to do a push-up and then a tricep pull. That full motion is one rep. Each pull you do will count as one rep and you're going to end up doing 10 on each side weight to side and go right into three sets of 30 plank jacks. So you're going to be hopping your feet back and forth for each rep. Finishing up with a hit burnout, you're going to do three rounds of this, 10 reps each of toe taps, jumping jacks, and high knees. lower body. So you're going to start with a warm up. You're going to be doing three rounds of this, 10 reps each, and you're going to be doing toe taps and jumping jacks. Now that you're warmed up, grab your set of dumbbells and you're going to be doing 30 reps of weighted walking lunges. Focus on getting your knee all the way down to the ground and taking nice wide lunges. <laughs> Moving on to your plyo party, doing three rounds, 10 reps of each of gate swings, crisscross squats, and jump squats. you complete your plyometric training, you're going to be moving on to curtsy combo squats. So grab a set of heavy dumbbells and you're going to be doing a curtsy lunge, squat, another curtsy lunge to complete one rep. Finishing up by burning out those glutes. So grab a bench or a chair and you're going to be doing feet elevated glute bridges. You're going to be doing 30 reps of these and then you're going to move right on to dirty dog raises for 30 reps on each side. Repeat the circuit three times. Finish your workout by taking a few minutes to stretch out. This will really help you from getting too sore and keep you from experiencing too much tightness in your joints. So really take that time. It's super important and you'll definitely notice a difference.
Thank you for watching another episode of Coffee with Cat. If you have questions you want me to answer next week, go ahead and leave them in the comments below or you can leave them on my Instagram. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and please subscribe. Have you